Hi, I would like to welcome you to this series in which we will dive in the analysis of multivariate data and machine learning. My name is Mahmoud Abdullahi and I work on EEG signals and machine learning. I have a PhD from Cardiff University in the UK and I have worked on sleep and memory and how our memories are reactivated during our sleep and the ways that we can detect this kind of memory reactivation and characterize it. If this is interesting to you, please go ahead and check my work on memory reactivation. I tried to put together some of the functions and concepts that I found uh, common in the analysis of multivariate data in a MATLAB package that is called Lively Vectors. Here we use EEG as our multivariate data as it is measured using multiple sensors. However, the concepts can be even like generalized to data from satellites or the analysis of videos and any multivariate data that you might have. So LV can be used in many applications and different fields. In addition to discussing EEG methods, we will also discuss the codes of lively vectors with examples using real data. I really hope that this series will be beneficial and I am open to questions and any suggestions. So please feel free to contact me or write a comment with any suggestions that you might have. Please feel free to share it with any one of your group or colleagues that might be interested. Here in our first episode, I would like to talk a little bit about how EEG looks and throughout the upcoming videos, I will try to make the analysis as visual as possible because in my opinion, I think that this is one of the best approaches to this kind of analysis and methods to, to include this kind of analysis visually. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the brain. So the cortex is the outer layer of neuronal tissue of the largest part of the brain. And I have to say the brain is truly fascinating. It contains around 86 billion neurons. And those neurons communicate and produce waves of electricity. And that's what electroencephalograms or EEGs are measuring. So EEG basically picks up the electrical activity of the brain. So EEGs does not record the activity of individual neurons, but rather it measures a larger group of neurons that are active uh, at the same time. So EEG is cortical and does not measure deep sources inside the brain. It measures uh, what can be considered as a combined effect from different areas. So we can think of it as measuring like if our electrode or sensor is here, it's really hearing uh, a lot of things from neighboring areas at the same time. So it's like measuring a combined effect of all of that. And it is also non-invasive. So EEG is non-invasive. That is why it is noisy because it doesn't measure the signals directly from the brain, but rather on the scalp, which makes the signal noisy. Thus EEG got low signal to noise ratio and low spatial resolution. Spatial in this context means space. So because EEG measures an effect from a larger population of neurons, it makes it difficult to accurately uh, locate the sources of that activity or which like small areas are producing a certain activity. However, EEG has high temporal resolution because we can record the activity with quite high sampling rates. So many samples per second. So it's very accurate uh, temporally. 
This makes EEG suitable in many applications in which we need to locate something very precisely in time, but we don't really care about the exact like neurons uh, producing the activity or very uh, small areas producing the activity. So long story short, EEG is good for answering when something is happening, but not where something is happening. To ask where something is happening, there are some other measures like fMRI and they are very good in locating uh, the activity. This is me on my second day after I arrived to the UK. You can see how happy I was <laughs> to be practicing in this uh, study. Anyways, here uh, we see many sensors placed uh, on the scalp. So we can see uh, a lot of sensors picking up uh, the electrical activity of the brain. Each one of these uh, sensors has uh, a label and each can be referred to as sensors or sometimes the channels or electrodes. So I might use any of these uh, terms, but I will be uh, referring to the same uh, thing. Each sensor measures uh, the activity of a certain location. And in the data sets that we will be discussing, um, normally this is measured in microvolts. Now imagine that the sensors are producing samples like that. So let's say this sensor is producing one sample and then another sample and then another sample. And we have this sensor producing one sample, second sample, a third sample like so, such that we can imagine that this, if it is standard, will be like a signal. And that's exactly what we see when we record the activity. So it will be like that. We have a lot of sensors, so a lot of activities measured at the same time. And if you are visualizing this in any recorder, most of the time they will look like that. So we will have this dimension representing channels and most of the time you will see that this dimension is representing time such that we can see the continuous recording uh, like so and in the meantime if we have 100 uh, hertz sampling rate this would mean that we have 100 sample per second so in a longer recording like this we might be interested in just one second because our brains are responding to external stimuli, so we could be interested in knowing how it responds to a particular uh, stimulus. We call this stimulus a trigger or event, so we could assume that we are interested in the activity that arises one second after representing a particular stimulus. So it could be like a stimulus on the screen uh, in front of the participant. So we would deliver a trigger which should normally appear with the signals, like on top of the signals or in our recording, like in this place or anywhere um, during uh, the recording. So it should appear in the signals. Now we are interested in analyzing one uh, second that comes after the stimulus. And thus we need to cut our signals into smaller one second segments and analyze them to see, of course, how the brain responds to the stimulus. So we call the small segments that we will be analyzing, we call them trials. So we can assume that we have our stimulus here. And let's assume that this is this part is one second and we are representing a second stimulus here and this part is also one second and we are representing a third stimulus here and this part is also one second so each one of those is one second okay so now it's very important to think about our data and how to visualize it just to make it easy to start talking about the methods later on Okay, so now let's try to visualize these trial 
channel time data so we imagine that we take the trials each one of these trials and put them underneath each other so we put this one underneath this one and this one underneath this one so it will be like we are going inside the screen and just putting all the trials underneath each other okay so let's put this in a nicer uh, way and look at this 3d shape right here and i would like this to be our uh, mental practice for today and i think it's really helpful in the future and it will really make a big difference in understanding different methods and it made it easier for me so perhaps it it will be the same case for you so i know it, it may sound weird but i think it's it's a good way to visualize the data so we imagine that these three dimensions are our trial channel time dimensions so that's the trials and this dimension is a channel and this is time so each one of them is having its own dimension like that so let's think about it for a moment so if we have our stimulus they should be at time zero because they are at the beginning of every trial so we will have our stimulus here at the beginning of time that's time zero and that's at the end of the trial so that's time one so our stimulus will be always at time zero of every trial so right here i'm looking at different trials and in every trial we are recording from a lot of channels so the first trial the first channel and the first time point will be here and then we will start recording our signals so we'll, we will be proceeding in time like so and that's the signal in time coming from the first trial and the first channel and then let's go to the second channel it will be looking like that so it will be continuous in time like that and third channel and so on so we can really imagine that we when we are moving in this third dimension we are speaking about time and we are moving when we are moving at this dimension it's a channel and when we are looking at the rows we're looking at trials so we can imagine that this would be like the final trial right here and this is the first channel going in time second channel and this is like the final trial final channel and it goes in time like so so i think if we really practice to think about our data in this way it will make uh, a huge uh, difference so um, in this part we will then uh, try to manipulate this inside of our heads and i know it's weird but try to imagine that this is any shape that is near you like if you have matches just imagine that these are matches and just call this dimension trials call this dimension channel and call this dimension time so basically i want you to pick up any object that has uh, this 3d property even if it was like a, a photo or something just imagine that we have something like this this is trials and this is channels and this is time i just want you to instead of just imagining this i need you to project uh, this picture on an actual object near you why i'm saying this because this will be very helpful in just instantly visualizing and thinking about uh, manipulating different dimensions when we talk about uh, some of the more advanced methods in the future and i would like to call this uh, our golden tensor i would be i will be referring to this shape uh, a lot when we talk about the methods um, i would like to introduce to you another uh, technique which i think is also very nice it is called mind palace or memory palace uh, this technique could help to recall information in an easy fashion 
uh, and it is visual uh, as well. With the technique, we can assume that we have learned, for example, two methods. They are, let's say, time frequency analysis and the cluster based uh, permutation. Any, any methods, uh, let's say for simplicity, like addition or subtraction, anything. I would like you to imagine that you are in a place that you know very well, like your home or your gym, whatever you choose, and you start putting um, like the steps of the method itself in different places. So imagining that you are uh, inside uh, your home, you are entering your home, you see the golden tensor on the sofa and then you multiply the signals with something and then you place the result on the table in your home. Then you apply another step and you place it in a different place in your home. I know it's weird, but it's very, very nice way of trying to remember uh, methods and try to like especially navigate this environment in your head and memorize or recall different methods. Imagine this and try to actually visit the place and imagine that you are putting these things. Um, and I think afterwards, retrieving the information will be easier. And I encourage you to have a look at Mind Palace uh, and search for it to see more about it. Okay, now that we have looked at our data and how it looks like. I think uh, we are ready to look at some code from Lively Victors and we will start to see how we can filter our EEG uh, signals and start with some other uh, methods.